spirit uh, this past week. It just seems like every day uh, he's giving me a word or a dream or something that has to do with this theme and I just feel like I have to share this with you. Um, so basically what this is about is what I believe the heart of the Father is right now is, is just a really genuine concern for his sheep. And one of the things I want to drive home is that, um, you know, Jesus never gave up ownership of his sheep. I think a lot of times there's this mistaken notion that the pastor is, you know, our shepherd, but there is only one good shepherd. Jesus told Peter, he said, feed my sheep. He said, take care of my sheep. He never gave his sheep to Peter. And it's important to understand that because we have to, as Christians, understand that we need to hear Jesus. We need to hear his voice. We need to be seeking him. If we're following any man, we can be led astray. Okay? And so it's so important for us as a part of the body of Christ to understand that, as well as for the shepherds, the, the people who are the, the pastors that are leading the people to understand you know that that Jesus is the owner of these sheep and and as a pastor you're accountable to him for how you treat the sheep you're accountable to him for what you feed the sheep and there is a scripture in 1st Samuel and it is uh, when David is talking to King Saul and he wants to go and fight Goliath so he begins to explain to him you know that he is uh, He's already killed the lion and the bear. And the way he explains it is he, he tells Saul, he says that he is a shepherd for his father. And he says when the, the lion or the bear come and, and take one of the sheep, he said, I go after them and I strike them and I rescue the sheep from their mouth. So this is a picture of Jesus Christ and his sheep. And he... When, when anyone, anybody, pastor, false teacher, um, anybody is leading the sheep astray, okay, you are basically setting yourself up against the good shepherd, okay, and he will come and rescue his sheep. And he um, does not wink at any man uh, taking that place of, of his headship. Okay, he is very serious about his sheep right now. And, and, and the message I keep getting from him, you know, is that his heart is very heavy for the fact that the sheep are not hearing the truth. The sheep are not being warned. They're not being told what's coming. Um, I don't know, I suppose anybody who subscribes to me, I'm sure, is aware of all these things. But this is just for somebody who may happen across this video. You know, we've got so many things going on in the Middle East. Our brothers and sisters in Christ are being slaughtered, okay? This group called ISIS, they are um, just murdering, mass murdering. They have taken children and beheaded them and put their heads on sticks. They're raping the women. They're slaughtering Christians and Jews. 170,000 people have been slaughtered in Syria there are 40,000 refugees right now in a mountain that these people have had to flee to escape the persecution of ISIS. Okay, this is happening right now. Our brothers and sisters in Christ are being slaughtered. And the Lord wants us to understand, you know, that um, what happens to them happens to us. Okay, we have got to really, in our spirit, begin to allow the Holy Spirit to, to help us get that revelation, that we are connected, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, and, and what is impacting them is impacting us. And, and the reality is, too, it may very well be here soon. You know, if you, if you are familiar with those events, you probably know, you know, that, that ISIS has declared jihad against America, um, that they are planning to put their flag up over the White House, Okay, so be warned. 
I don't know, maybe, maybe your pastor is telling you these things. Maybe you are aware of the things that are coming. You know, the persecution. I don't know. I hope and pray that you are. And if you are a pastor, you know, I pray that you are sharing the truth, you know, with the flocks. I have heard of an investigative reporter who was asking pastors, you know, are you warning your congregations about the FEMA camps? Are you telling them the things that are coming? And this reporter, from what I've heard, was shocked to find out that these pastors were not telling their congregations the truth because, one, they were afraid of losing parishioners, and two, they, they didn't want to lose their tax status. Okay, again, you know, this goes back to you are responsible for how you treat the sheep. Okay, if you're a pastor, um, you know, you're going to have to give an account for the fact that you know, you, you did not warn the sheep, okay? It's, I can't emphasize that enough, you know, that the Father is, is very heavy-hearted with this reality of his sheep um, not being told the truth, okay? So, I mean, I know there's, there's great pastors out there, Pastor Paul Begley, uh, Pastor J.D. Farag out of Hawaii. Um, I listen to them regularly. You know, these, these men are stand up, tell the truth, men, regardless of the cost. I highly respect them. Um, and, you know, I hope that you have a pastor like that. But if not, you know, I really encourage you uh, to begin seeking truth on your own and, and really um, getting educated on, on what the Holy Spirit is wanting His church to understand right now. You know, we know the rapture's coming. Um, but there's persecution that we'll probably be facing before then. So um, it's just time for us all to get ready uh, and to be connected in the body, you know, with, with other faithful members of the body of Christ. Okay. So anyway, I, uh, I hope and pray, you know, that you are kept in safety and um, 